Okay, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us this afternoon on a very sunny afternoon in London, I have to say. Um, so welcome, this is our sixth event in our Open Innovation series. And today is all about driving sustainability with open innovation. And you're in for a treat for the next hour um, because I'm gonna be welcoming shortly Jamie Sargent, who's the CEO of Crowd an innovative, sustainable focused marketing agency. He'll be talking to Susan Curler, who's Chief Sales and Marketing Officer of Footprint. I'll let Jamie explain what they do, but it's really exciting um, packaging solutions, but I'll, I'll leave it at that. I won't steal his thunder. Um, and Alfonso Diaz, who's the CEO of Business RCD from Mallorca. Um, he's doing some incredible work with a Spanish football club um, so Jamie will introduce his guests and, and talk through the collaboration together and they'll be talking about a really exciting partnership, an initiative to eradicate plastic from football stadiums and how they're really going to be using open innovation as a tool to drive forward these sustainable solutions. So I'm really looking forward to hearing from them. But before I bring in Jamie and his guests, um, I just want to share a few quick updates um, for those of you who are in our Open Innovation Fellowship community. Um, first of all, we're excited that we're going to be launching our third cohort in October. Um, given that we first started this fellowship programme only a year ago, that we're excited about this new cohort. So we're going to be joined by Virgin Media, O2, AstraZeneca, Kennedy Law, Kennedy, Kennedy's Law, the Fire Brigade in London, um, and a few more as well. We'll have probably about 12 to 15 heads of innovation in the corporate. So the fellowship, for those of you who are new to this, um, is London and Partners Executive Education Programme. Um, it's a networking group essentially that is really designed for senior innovators who want to be part of a community that can really drive change, drive change here in London, but also globally. Now, what these fellows learn on the sort of these modules that we deliver with for them is how to deliver innovation practices across their businesses that are more diverse, more inclusive, more sustainable. Um, but they learn that together as a group. So there's lots of shared learnings with each other. And we also take them out to different parts of London so they can experience how you know, how community and how place is driving innovation in our city. So we've got a few final places left for October. So Lauren Quigley, who's the head of this program, will be staying on after the presentation and the panel. Um, if anybody wants to have a quick chat with Lauren, if you feel that you would like to grab one of those places, then now, now is your chance. Um, I'm also ex excited to share today, and this is, this is real news because we haven't shared this with anybody yet, but we're also going to be launching an Open Innovation Masterclass in partnership with the Royal College of Art in November. Um, as you can see from the slide, it'll be the 22nd and 23rd of November. And it's really going to be a one day course, um, almost like an entry level to Open Innovation to provide an introduction to the principles of Open Innovation and different Open Innovation operating models. So some of you might feel, you know, some organizations are already saying they want to send a whole team on this. Um, but again, you know, happy to talk to anybody who's keen to learn a little bit more about these courses that we're delivering. There is an early bird rate. I'll do my little sales pitch here. Um, so do get in touch if you want to sign up quickly for that. So I'm now absolutely thrilled to welcome um, Jamie Sargent, who's the CEO of a marketing agency called Crowd. So Crowd is an independent global marketing agency specializing in the creation and delivery of environmentally sustainable products and also service promotions. They have worked across 11 major cities and with brands such as Adidas, Kenwood, Costa Coffee and Nike. Um, so he's going to share a bit more background with us all on how Crowd is using open innovation to promote sustainability. And then Jamie will also introduce his guests. So thank you, Jamie. Delighted to have you with us. Thank you ever so much. 
Oh, brilliant. Okay, well, over to you to share some of your insights. And then I know Lauren's going to be asking you a few questions at the end. So thank you. Fantastic. So I'm just about to um, share a deck with everybody. Um, hopefully that's um, now visible. Um, and, and really what I'm going to cover off today is, is how we're using open innovation to uh, to really push um, a sustainable message for, for, for Footprint and look to try and solve um, the sort of, to, to, to try and get rid of single use plastic from football stadiums. But before I get to that, I'll talk you through um, a little bit about how we work and the process that we take for open innovation, because there are a variety of different ways to, to approach it. And we've developed a process um, of working with our clients to, to, to really get the very best out of um, um, open innovation and get everybody's ideas involved. And then I'm going to show you a case study and then we'll talk about um, and then we'll talk about the, the, the campaign we're, we're running with Footprint. So first of all, it's 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 sort of identifying what the what the problem is and um, and then in doing that, we're able to start to think about what a solution might be. But at the beginning of um, any of these um, campaigns or, or projects, we, we, we never really know what the outcome might be. So it's, it's sort of accepting the fact that by um, having an open innovation um, process, you're, you're being super sort of inclusive and, and looking to, um, to, to strive to find answers um, that you wouldn't necessarily be able to find within your own team. So what we first of all do is, is set, up, um, uh, set up a series of meetings. And, and in those, we, we look at um, where the problems might lie and then what process we're going to take. So it could be a closed, um, it could be a closed open innovation um, piece where you might just look at staff within your organization. Or it might be like the one that we're going to be doing with Footprint, open to anybody in this instance that's um, under the age of 16. So we want to try and explore what the youth um, might be able to provide us um, for, um, for their ideas and insights. So throughout Crowd, we have a, a, a vast network of, uh, of thinkers. And um, what this normally lets you do is, is look at a problem from a different perspective. And typically, innovation only really happens when things are going wrong. Um, large corporates don't tend to shift. If things are moving, they'll just try and um, they'll just try and amplify that. Whereas what we're looking at doing is is to try and look at the problem from a slightly different perspective, and in doing so, um, find a different answer. And throughout that process, it's. Finding the solution isn't the only result of open innovation. So what you're actually doing is, is you're working with, um, with, it could be a particular audience, or it could be people within your business, um, or it could just be an open, completely sort of open to everybody to take part. But what will actually happen um, for your business is, is a number of other benefits. So... Those, um, those benefits, um, they, they may be around um, creating the best employability brands, they may be around um, collaborating with academia or, or collaborating more so with your internal team. But what, what it actually does is, is what well, all of these things that are on screen. So that's, um, that's sort of our process to open innovation and, and how we approach it. So what I'm going to do now is just talk you through um, talk you through a case study um, of of how we helped um, of how we helped Kenwood. So um, most of you I, 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 in the UK will know um, sort of Kenwood is, um, is 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 a brand that have been around for some time, and their innovation team uh, came to us because because of um, things like um, crowdfunded platforms that were that were basically getting products to market in a in a really quick way so what they wanted to do was create um, a create a closed environment um, for people to be talking about ideas sharing ideas with them and and looking at getting that sort of that different perspective so 
what we did um, was we created a platform called the Cutting Edge. And then what we when, when we had our platform, we built a point system in that platform. So any ideas that were submitted into the into the platform um, could be voted up. And, and what that did was, um, was start to create um, a number of ideas that were voted on by um, our cutting edge members. Now, to recruit the cutting edge members, um, we use social media. So we wanted to identify a particular type of um, audience and we wanted them to be mixed and, and varied. So we looked at, um, at any, everything from foodies to, uh, to, to housewives, to, um, to inventors. And we then engaged with them on social media and invited them into the cutting edge. Um, I'm gonna show you a video and hopefully the sound will work on this. Um, uh, this is the recruitment video that, uh, that we created for the cutting edge that has just jumped to the next screen. One second. Kenneth Wood created the first ever toaster. Now I want you to be part of the future Kenwood innovation. On behalf of Kenwood, I'd like to invite you to be a part of the cutting edge. Successful innovation occurs only when we look at things in a much bigger way. We want to work with you to develop new ideas, new ways of thinking and new products to make us deliver better products for you in the future. More importantly, you will be able to see your ideas coming into the reality. Every member of Cutting Edge is carefully selected as we believe you have what it takes. As a member of the Cutting Edge, we'd like to share some of our ideas with you and also get loads of ideas from you as well. So along with your good ideas and our technical expertise, we should be able to bring your idea into fruition. There is no future without you guys and there is no trend without understanding you guys. Join us and help shape the future of food technology and we will reward you for your contributions to Kenwood. On behalf of Kenwood, we'd like to introduce you to the cutting edge. So once we, uh, once we had uh, the recruitment video in place, what we then did was we started to, uh, we started to recruit uh, our audience and we welcomed them into the platform. And what we wanted to do with that was, was bring them in, in, um, in groups because we wanted to create um, a hierarchy within the community um, because it was point based. So that then started to encourage people to engage with the content and the ideas within that platform. And some of the benefits um, of the campaign itself were, um, were not only creating brand ambassadors, and you'll see that what we what we did in a second, but it was building brand ambassadors, but also there was two patents that were found during this process that were, were registered for, for, for Kenwood. So there, there was over 3000 um, comments and, um, and, and ideas, and then an average sort of comments per idea was about 105. So this really gave Kenwood some, some insights into some of the products that they were looking to develop. And you know, we, post, uh, we posted sort of questions in there, such as, you know, what's the future of the kitchen and how would the Internet of Things um, uh, work within, within the kitchen? So some fascinating topics that gave um, Kenwood incredible insights. Um, and what you're looking at here is, um, is obviously we created the, the, the brand for this. And in order for us to protect the IP within the, um, within the platform itself, um, we, we needed people to sign a contract and, um, and what we did with that was um, we incentivized that with personalized um, aprons and, and this, uh, you, you might rec um, sort of recognize this whole concept of aprons, but this actual apron had, um, was, was developed from, by the innovation team at Kenwood and had a, a pocket on the front that uh, you could uh, put your mobile phone in so as you could record videos of you um, cooking. And that then sort of, as we started to send these out and got our contracts back, um, we let in the participants and, um, and then social media wise, um, we saw some, um, uh, an incredible sort of, um, an incredible expansion of, of, of their social campaigns, but we also wanted to keep a queue of people that wanted to be, uh, that wanted to get into the cutting edge, um, because it was a fairly exclusive 
um, exclusive club. So at, we had about 100 people in there um, and we would be introducing new people all the time uh, for fresh ideas. So that was the campaign where we've used um, sort of a closed environment to create uh, ideas and innovations for, for a brand. At this point, I'd like to introduce um, Susan from Footprint, and um, she can explain a little bit about the, the uh, a bit a bit about Footprint and what they do. Um, Footprint are a client of ours, and we've been working with them for a number of years, and they're doing some absolutely incredible things, um, which I will let Susan talk about. Thank you so much, Jamie, and for having us here today. Um, Footprint is a material science company. We have about 150 engineers and our two co-founders were um, engineers from Intel. So our whole mission is to create a healthy planet. And the way we're going about that in phase one is to eliminate single use plastic. So I have a couple props just to show you what that might look like in the food industry. So this is a bowl that actually has an incredible amount of science to it because it is created to be recyclable and also compostable. Um, and it replaces a plastic black bowl, which would not be recyclable or compostable, and it would sit in the landfill for many, many hundreds of years. Um, the engineering that takes place to create something like this is pretty miraculous because the food goes in, it has to be frozen, and it can live in a freezer up to 14 months. Then when it comes out, it can go into a microwave or an oven directly and there's no transfer of bad particles into the food. And so we're very proud of this. Another good example that you may or may not know is every cup that's out there today has a plastic liner in it. This is the first one that we've created and that will eventually be showing in football, in football club stadiums um, where there's no plastic liner. And so um, in order to do this, we have something like, let's see, 30 patents, and then we have another 2,430 um, patent claims pending. The other quick example, and then we'll move on, is our ability to replace, let's say, mac and cheese, which is usually in a plastic um, container with a plastic wrap on it. Now it can be in a safe, um, recyclable, compostable cup that's healthy for the kids, right? And we get rid of that outer um, plastic wrap because we can print directly to fiber. So those are just a few examples of what we're doing. Brilliant. Thank you, um, Susan. So working with Footprint, um, we uh, have created an open innovation goal, and that is to, uh, to look to unleash the sort of boundless imagination of young football fans um, to create and develop new ways to reduce and eliminate single-use plastic from football stadiums. And to put this in perspective, um, some of the larger clubs um, in the UK probably be using somewhere between 20 and 25,000 single-use plastic cups at a game. Um, and those um, typically end up in landfill. So what we're looking at doing is creating um, a creating a, a call to, to the youth to see how they feel they may be able to help us eliminate um, single-use plastic from football stadiums. The campaign is called um, Kids Kick Out Plastic. And we believe by talking directly to children, um, we will start to receive some untainted ideas. And the outcome of this, um, we, we don't know. Um, but what we will be doing is working with uh, what we believe are the best 20 ideas and uh, then putting them together with some of the material scientists from, from Footprint and seeing how we can then develop um, those ideas into, into something that might be practical for the future. And if this works and we manage to, uh, to, uh, to produce something that is going to solve um, this problem, then you can only imagine the scale of um, landfill that we'll be saving. So we are, we're really excited about, um, about this idea and working with partners, um, we believe um, that, uh, that, that we can set out to achieve um, something quite magical. And one of our partners um, is Alfonso. I'll um, now introduce Alfonso and, and, and he can explain some of the work that he's doing with Real Mallorca um, and, um, and his work in sustainability. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you to everyone. 
And hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to, to be here and explain a little bit how we are working towards a greater sustainability uh, as a club and how it fits into our local community. Well, first, let me introduce myself. My name is Alfonso Diaz. I'm the business CEO of business of, of the club in charge of all the commercial, business and institutional uh, issues and representing the club. And of course, that the, within this scope, the sustainability falls under my responsibility. Um, the club, uh, we are uh, located in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, in a beautiful island. We are a centenary club, football club, with more than 100 years, and it is owned by uh, an American group uh, since uh, 2016, uh, so it's around six years ago. Um, those, this, this group is also the owner of the Phoenix Suns of the NBA, so, well, we have this, this, uh, this group that is supporting us from, from six years ago, as I, as I told you. Um, thanks to that agreement, to that ownership, we close uh, an incredible partnership with Footprint, uh, a three-side agreement with the Phoenix Suns, RCD Mallorca and Footprint. And it's a great pleasure no, to, to be with them, to take that opportunity to work closely with Susan. And of course, it's a statement of intent uh, to improve uh, our sustainability uh, model. No? Uh, our priority, uh, of course, that is uh, to have a more sustainable community, but being a local and international level, uh, the plastic reduction is one of our priorities. And uh, it's not only during the match day, that of course is where all the maximum tons of, of waste is is created, but of course our day by day, also we have an incredible uh, training ground with more than 250 players and the use of plastic is there. So we have to work on a strong plan, be very determined and, and try to, to, to set up this culture of uh, plastic reduction among all our club and also among our uh, partners and supported base. Uh, just as an idea, we generate around nine tons of waste by season, where 85% is light packaging. So we try to, to start with the light packaging management system. We close an agreement with an external organic uh, waste service uh, company, uh, and we try to handle how this uh, sustainable manner and how to, to control uh, these nine tons of, of waste now. Uh, however, we, we start with this and now with the help of, uh, of Footprint, uh, this is something that we must strive uh, to do and, and, and we need to, to improve, of course, now. Um, so working alongside with Footprint and being involved in campaigns such as this one, I think that is the right path now to becoming a, a sustainable uh, football club for the future. No? Um, our club is, is um, among the four, uh, the foremost institution of our island. So we have this responsibility uh, to be leading these sustainable, uh, sustainable uh, uh, activities. No? On the other hand, it's important to say that um, we are in an incredible and natural island. Uh, where the plastic in all the forms has to be eradicated. Uh, so one of our principal uh, treats to these beautiful beaches, clear oceans and an and incredible forest are the plastic. So we need to, we are fully intended to preserve uh, this for the, our next generations now. Um, just to let you know, in terms of regulation, our local government and our island uh, are in front of what other regions in Spain are doing. And since uh, 2020, um, the plastic products were prohibited, prohibited uh, in the islands. So it has to be now replaced by reusable products or products made or materials uh, other than plastic. So you can see that on restaurants, you can see when you go to the supermarket. So we are in front. And of course, that uh, belonging to this great uh, island, we, we have to be in front. So thanks to the help of Footprint and these initiatives, we will support 
it is for sure and we would like to implement and uh, have um, this positive change across the club and in our community and on our island for this. Fantastic. Thank you, um, Alfonso, and um, and for the for the support um, for, for for the campaign. So, as um, as we sort of alluded to, the um, the campaign uh, will be going live shortly, and um, and we have some incredible supporters already, and and we're really looking forward to seeing um, what the outcome of this may well be, um, and, and and hopefully it will be. Um, it'll be someone, um, it'll be some, some youth that helps us um, support this. Thank you ever so much. Amazing. Thank you so much, Jamie. Um, and just to introduce myself to everyone, I'm Lauren. Um, I head up the Innovation Programmes team and lead on the Open Innovation Fellowship for London and Partners. Um, but thank you so much for that and for the introduction to Kids Cook Out Plastic. It's an amazing initiative and I'm really keen to kind of dig a little bit more into this with you all. Um, I'm going to come to you first, Susan, actually, because I think it's really interesting, obviously, all the work that you've been doing at Footprint. You've already come up with and developed lots of different innovative plastic-free solutions through your own research and development. Um, so what really made you want to kind of open it up and bring in external ideas at this stage and specifically for this project? Well, when you look at the data, um, kids really are innovative. They're very creative. They don't think about things in terms of boundaries. So they come at problem solutions in a very open way. Um, so number one, that's important. Number two, I think working with the football clubs is first and foremost. I mean, the passion that exists throughout Europe for their footballers and the history, um, it really is connecting with fans at a place that they really care deeply. And it's a community, right? There's history. And so this concept of being able to change for future generations and how they see football clubs being a part of their history, but also their future, that, that's really why we wanted to engage. Yeah, amazing. And Jamie, kind of this approach with using a challenge prize for this, you know, how have you seen that really drive kind of authentic engagement with communities? I mean, do you think it makes it more accessible for people to want to get involved? I mean, what, what do you think the real kind of, yeah, the selection process behind that and how you think it will drive change? Yeah, so I think it's um, it's probably one of the most inclusive ways um, that you can solve a problem, um, open innovation. And, and, and we're very much hoping that um, that this will appeal to, to the youth because it's, it's their future that... Um, that this is going to sort of solve. So, and you know, no one wants to think about uh, landfills and, and 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 plastic in them. You know, the, the shocking fact that I, I believe that only about nine percent of plastic is recycled. Um, so it's a uh, it, it's a myth. Recycling is 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 a is a massive myth, and and we've been doing a number of uh, projects, sort of globally, to try and bring awareness around that um, and create awareness for for you know the the, the horrors of single use plastic. Yeah, no, completely. Um, and I mean, Alfonso, you touched obviously on the importance of eliminating these sorts of plastics from the island in particular. Obviously, there's a huge kind of drive across the island to make sure that it's plastic free. Being such a big institution um, within the island, you know, a key kind of uh, anchor almost institution within the community, how are you seeing changes based on the fact that you're driving this change within your own organisation through these big open initiatives? How do you think that will therefore impact other sectors, other businesses on the island and potentially feed back into Spain as well on the mainland? Oh, I think you're muted, Alfonso. It's important first to say that we are in the football industry and you can imagine how important and which is the big impact and positive impact that we can have on people and of course on all these institutions. In our case, in our community, we are um, a really important institution uh, that is, um, has a lot of engagement, there's a lot of passion and I believe that we can be um, um, and we can be leading the change now. And it's something that we really need to do now. Uh, so we are not going to stop just playing football and kicking the ball. We have to be uh, more uh, concerned about what is really happening in, in our earth and of course in our 
uh, area and region. Now we have to work on that. Wow. And inspiring the next generation. I mean, I think we, we haven't even really touched on that. But I mean, Susan, you mentioned obviously kids can come at problems in all sorts of different ways, but they also can be demand change. And, you know, if they can experience innovation in one sector, they might demand it in another. And, and ultimately we can hopefully create a new generation of innovators that, that are driving this really positive change, uh, which is really exciting, I think. So, I mean, it'd be great, Susan, if you could tell us a little bit more about, I mean, almost the practicalities of how this is gonna work and, and kind of how you're actually maybe gonna take some of those initiatives through to pilot and, and what that might look like. I know you mentioned the best 20 ideas will be kind of, you know, worked up, but it would be great to kind of hear a little bit more about that. Yeah, so just imagine the innovation is getting kicked off today. We'll be getting all these different ideas and then we'll be looking at them and evaluating them for, you know, basically we can create anything. That's how you should think of it from an engineering standpoint. And it really comes down to, how do we transform the stadium um, in Majorca? And then that can extend to all other stadiums throughout Europe or even in America. And so imagine being this kid that comes up with a new um, solution. I don't know, you know, we talked a little bit about a cup, but maybe it's something you carry your food in, or maybe it's not just the object. They talk more about how it can become more compostable. Right, so there's all different creative ways that they could solve this. And as I said, um, there's no limitations. There's been research done when you do an open innovation that sometimes what happens is experts think very linearly. They think about constraints, right? Because they live in this world and they think about it in that manner. But when you open it up to people that have no idea of constraints, including kids, you know, anybody 16 and under, the ideas will be breakthrough. We are very very um, not hopeful. We are convinced these ideas will be breakthrough and they'll be from the spirit of football lovers and fans. Like this is how my experience could be very different in the stadium. Yeah, no, completely. I mean, you mentioned there obviously the, the ambition to hopefully scale it across, you know, all of Europe's football clubs and hopefully across the States as well. I mean, are there plans in place for that already? Are you talking to other potential stakeholders to run similar initiatives after this, this first one? This is our first. Um, but I'm very keen to try to do this in, in the U.S. too. So um, Alfonso had mentioned the same ownership group owns the Phoenix Suns and the Phoenix Mercury. So we're opening the Footprint Center um, October 20th. And part of the same thing that Alfonso was talking about was the fan engagement, allowing them to come on this journey and really experience what is it like to be a part of that community of loving you know, your team and cheering them on to victory, but also extending to your community and understanding like, hey, I've used these bowls or these cups or, you know, now I place them in a stadium in a composting bin or recycle bin and they don't have to go into a landfill or trash bin and helping them help us to tell the story. I, I think that's what we're most interested in. Just like the fans in this um kick out plastic campaign, they're gonna be giving us ideas. We're gonna be bringing new products and testing them with customers. I've already been there with our cup and, and had a chance to do consumer research. So, you know, we have cutlery, you know, utensils, really getting the fans engaged with, how do we change the future? We, we None of us want the plastic here. It's not good for today's generation or the future. Yeah, no, completely. I mean, it'd be great to understand a little bit more, I mean, Alfonso, about how you are engaging, you know, how you plan to activate this community. I know this challenge prize is one, but it sounds like you have a community that is already really passionately engaged with the club, that is very committed. How will you activate that to really, you know, drive as many ideas as possible? Well, yes, the starting point is know and hear the kids. Yeah. And this is great to, to have this initiative and this campaign because we will know with such strength who, what, what they think, which are the ideas. Yeah. Because it is true that we have maybe, um, uh, we have to be more open mind. The adults should be more open mind to try to change the things. Yeah. And, and of course with Footprint, Footprint will help us a lot and we support on this road. It's something that, to be honest, I believe that at least in Spanish football is something that has, has not been uh, as of now um, a priority mm -hmm. because of the current of the situation we were living in the past years now with the COVID. So 
everyone maybe was thinking in another things in me was in being more sustainable but in finance in the finance side or in the sports side but of course that we have to be the flag of this change and we want to be the flag of this change in the spanish football for sure and we should be an example in spain and i'm sure that uh, all the clubs will follow us and of course not only our fans but other fans from other clubs clubs will follow our 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 initiative and what we are doing because i believe that we will do a really great job and something really innovative yeah no completely and i mean touching on covid there i mean this really is an opportunity to build a better future you know where covid broke down so many so many things and you know innovation has become a real hot topic i think as a result of covid you know people industries completely organizations have been disrupted and i think now is a real chance to harness that disruption and ride the wave to hopefully a better future um jamie i'd love to kind of bring you in here i mean obviously we've got three kind of great really distinct organizations working together with a similar mission goal ambition um obviously they can you know, multi-stakeholder partnerships can be challenging. You're across different time zones, different companies, uh, different countries. You know, how how are you driving success with this? Um, and how how you know what learnings could perhaps our audience take away from this successful partnership? Well, yeah, we're lucky. Um, we we have offices in in both Madrid and and the US, so um, we we're across all different time zones. Um, so from a communication standpoint. Um, you know, we've been working successfully with uh, with Footprint for, for a number of years now and and helping them uh, sort of amplify their, their their message. So, I mean, we're very much hoping that, to, to, that this is just um, just the start. You know, we'd like to get sort of more um, schools involved and, um, and other clubs involved. Um, although this particular um, instance is, is around focused in around football stadiums, um, there, there's you know, there is no, there's no end to this. Um, it's, it's looking to try and just, um, just, you know, not only create awareness for the, um, for the negative areas around single use plastic, but I mean, even during, um, you know, the last year, sort of plastic um, uh, production has gone up. So I think now is a really good opportunity to try and, um, to try and stop that. And, and make people aware, make the youth aware, because they're the ones that will demand change and, and, and hopefully will get listened to. And what we want to do is, is build that platform for them to, to give them a voice, um, match them with some of the experts um, at Footprint, so as we can then try and uh, develop those ideas. And the actual outcome will be those 20 ideas and a spotlight on those uh, on, on the people that have come up with them and then those are going to be circulated uh, around the entire football community so yeah. you know hopefully uh, obviously you know we, we, we're going to be working with with some key partners um, but um, but looking at trying to get this so as you know adoption is is you know every every stadium um, it c can then sort of have some uh, have some other options for, for single use um, plastic. Yeah, completely. And I mean, this is a, a potentially more general question. I mean, potentially Susan for you, you know, if the ideas are coming in from all sorts of different areas, all sorts of different, you know, um, parts of the community, who will kind of own that idea? Will the kind of person who comes up with it work in partnership with your team to, to build it into something? Where will that IP sit? How will it be rolled out? You know, these sorts of more tactical questions that I guess, you know, we're all trying to drive really open collaboration here. So I think it's, you know, it'd be great to kind of understand that and, and where that might sit. Yeah, I mean, the, the ideas will come in and they'll be very general, right? And we'll definitely attribute the broad idea to whomever it comes up with it. And I'm sure we could have them attend a football club game in New York, et cetera, and be, um, you know, applauded, et cetera. Um, from an engineering standpoint, we'll have to then come up with, there's all this detail that goes into like what's called the design. How do you then take it from an engineering standpoint to actually be able to create it? Then what's the formulation? Like I had no idea that plant-based fibers were so um, unique. There's short ones, there's long ones, there's curly ones, there's thin ones, there's fat ones. And so it's like the most um, detailed like chef having to figure out this incredible recipe of how it all comes together, you know? So 
it doesn't have holes or it can't be porous, et cetera. So there's a lot of um, science that goes into that. Um, and then nobody else is producing this in the world, you know, at our level and scale and um, uh, customization. And so therefore there's, you know, how do you make it on certain machines? We have to build very specific forms and machines. And so a lot of that is also patented. But, uh, it, you know, having the ideas kicks everything off. And so we want to welcome, you know, kids, anybody with ideas to come forward. And when they're passionate about their football team and their experience in the stadium, we want to hear from them how we can help. Yeah, amazing. Um, we've got some great questions coming in through the chat. So I'll just, I'll start to sort of bring those in as well. Um, so from Phoebe, um, Jamie, I think we'll start with you on this one, but I think okay. we might have something to add to this. Um, how can smaller businesses do their bit to drive innovation and sustainability when they don't have the same reach as larger organizations? Yeah, that's um, a really good question. I, I mean, I think it starts with um, it starts with understanding what it is that you're looking to change mm -hmm. and and then um, and, and then potentially looking at sort of getting a group of people together to help drive, you know, something like this. Uh, obviously, the, we've developed a process that can be rolled out um, across an internal team. So this could just be um, a process that you use internally. So as members of your staff actually feel part of, you know, solving a problem. And that problem uh, might be you know, it, it could be huge. So there's been some really good examples of of, of open innovation um, with with something called X Prize in the US, where where they've opened this up to solving, you know, how to make uh, how to make water from nothing. Um, and you know that was solved by a two-person startup in 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 California, um, and they 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 worked out a way of how they can get moisture from the air. And turn it into drinking water so the, it depends on 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 i think first of all it's framing that challenge so you know being clear as to what it is that you're looking to try and solve and and being as open as possible um to it and then just building a platform um uh, and a process to how you're going to get your community involved because this could be something that was run you know run in a church community or you know in a small sort of um in a small tight-knit community or something like this which is um which is going open you know to uh in effect the world yeah. so how how smaller businesses can get involved i think is is just by sort of embracing it first of all and then looking at um what what they're trying to solve um and and then working back from there mm -hmm. so you know from a just from a sort of amplification of reaching people that might be something that you know it could be on, on its very smallest scale you know a, a sort of a notice in a shop window to its larger scale you know where you're building a digital platform to enable people to put um to, to, to put forward their ideas well, so i I'll do think it's in. scalable yeah the, the one thing that we noticed here during covid is um, in all the delivery of your fast food, whether you're going through takeout or whether here it's called Uber Eats and different things, Grubhub. Um, even if you selected, you did not want the plastic utensils or you did not want the plastic straws, et cetera, they still were putting them in. Mm -hmm. And so this is the mentality, at least here, where you know, um, if people are ele electing not to and or don't make it the default to automatically provide pla more plastic. And so I think we really over, we went overboard in our country and even, you know, attending the basketball games, um, you know, where they were opening up and there was limited seating, everything was in plastic. There was more plastic than ever um, because of the health restrictions and the concern. And so now the time is to push that pendulum back. Yeah, I mean, Alfonso, I'd, I'd love to kind of bring you in here. Obviously, um, you know, you're driving this ambition across a large organization. Um, and obviously, you know, it's a big ambitious target to, you know, go plastic free as a whole stadium. You know, are there challenges that you expect to face when swapping to a completely plastic free environment? And how will you really, I mean, there's the, the obvious metric of success in that you'll be plastic free, but, you know, how will you maintain that trajectory um, and continue to, you know, reduce your impact on the environment? Well, 
First, we, we have to consider that, of course, that we are a, a large business. Mm -hmm. We are a small company with a big crowd, with a big audience. Mm -hmm. So the good thing is that we can get and arrive to a lot of people through all, uh, through, through all what we are doing, all the messages we are doing, now, all the actions we are taking. Mm -hmm. uh, our mentality has to change, of course, but it's important the message we are giving. No? Um, on the other hand, it's important to say that we are a tourist um, island, and here we are so international. Uh, we have 23 million passengers in our airport every year, and out of that, around 18 million, 18 million passengers are tourists. So also we can send a message to all these people that are coming to the island, to those people that are coming to our stadium, because during the high season, I would say from May to September, October, there's a lot of people, fans that are coming, football fans that are coming to our stadium. So with this small thing, we can also transfer and transmit what we are doing and, and what we want to change. So we are a small club with a big audience, and I believe that we can have impact and change uh, the environment, people that are coming here. Also, it's important to say uh, that we have a large number of hotels, Mm -hmm. hotel chains, um, the tourism is one of the biggest industry in the island. So imagine also what we can do and how we can influence on those hotels, companies that also need to change. Mm -hmm. And those will send a message also to all these individual people, families that are going to the hotel. So these are the initiatives that will make us change. Of course, that we will implement, we will work with footprint on this, on our stadium, but this is just part of the vast uh, uh, initiative and the vast job we have to do in the island. Yeah. yeah, completely. And Lauren, one comment is, you know, it's a journey, right? It's going to take time, but the important thing is we are so fortunate to have Alfonso, his team, and you know, real um, Mallorca as yeah. this pinnacle of hope and commitment because the island cares so deeply, every, the restaurants care. And so I totally agree with everything he said, the number of visitors, it couldn't have been a better partner in which to start with. And we're starting, everything's not gonna be fixed immediately, but with these ideas, with the commitment, um, we're gonna get there. Yeah. 100%. I mean, I, this initiative is just incredible. Um, we've got more questions coming through. Um, Susan, this one's for you. Um, how can we make plastic-free products more mainstream? How to make them more mainstream? Yeah. Yeah, I think the first thing is people don't realize that there is an alternative. So mm -hmm. I have this huge challenge of education. And that's part of why this partnership is so important. That's part of why this open innovation challenge is so important. Mm -hmm. um, so there's been a lot of education about plastic is bad. Plastic is a disaster. You know, like by the year 2050, there'll be more plastic in the ocean than fish. But on the other hand, people have no idea. Okay, but what do I do differently? You know, that's what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And so historically people didn't know our name you know footprint they didn't know about our um, innovation you know we are a global company we now have a team in london we have a team um in the netherlands we've got factories in poland etc and so um we have been building our our capacity to change from hundreds of millions of units that are shipped to billions and billions of units shipped and so, and, you know, we're working with some of the largest companies in the world, um, but um, people needed to know that we were the technology and the engineers behind it. Otherwise, it just kind of gets um, absorbed into individual companies versus providing this confidence to people that there's a solution. And, and you know what, there's other alternatives that are good. You know, glass is great. Glass can be recycled at a high rate. Now, Glass isn't great for a, an event stadium. You know, it's not great for a football club. But yeah. in your own home, using glass to drink water is so much better than um, using a plastic, you know, water bottle at home. I heard a statistic that was something like 60% of all water bottles are being consumed in people's homes. Oh, wow. 
Isn't that just, mm-hmm. that's horrendous. So crazy. You know, get a glass, you know, and use <laughs> tap water or use, you know, a filtration system. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if that was worldwide or if that was a U.S. based statistic, but you know that that kind of um, that people aren't thinking about their actions and what it's doing to our future generations and our environment. Yeah, and I guess it's initiatives like this, you know, by embedding yourself through anchor institutions within communities and really raising the profile and mission, uh, you know, that you're all working towards is one of the best ways of raising awareness, educating communities from a really young age. So we've had an amazing comment in the chat that I'd love to reach out before I have a final question. Uh, and it's from Paul. And he says, love the approach and kick off plastic initiative. Congratulations. The fantastic thing about young people is they don't know what's impossible. Mm-hmm. Such a great way to get customer experience insights and collaboration from people fully invested in their club and passionate about what they're doing. So yes, thank you, Paul. Completely, completely right. Um, so a kind of a final question really for you all, and I'd love to kind of get your, all of your thoughts on this. Um, what do you really think is key to ensuring open innovation activities and, and kind of activations like this initiative are successful? Uh, Jamie, why don't we kick off with you? I, I, I think it's um, making it as easy as possible uh, for, for people to participate mm-hmm. and um, making it as, so there are no boundaries and, you know, really, um, you know, what are those big thinkers? Um, because there's, if, you know, if you ask children, they will think so large that you, you know, that, that as an adult, you're constrained because of, um, because of your, your wiring. Um, but um, for, for kids in particular, they, um, they have no boundaries. Their imagination is, is incredible. And mm-hmm. they're not, you know, to Paul's um, point, um, nothing's impossible. So and so from the perspective of how to run a successful open innovation, I think it's um, making it really easy to understand, you know, what are we trying to do here? In this instance, it's kids kick out plastic. Um, So the message is um, is clear. Then it's enabling them to to do that in an easy way. And um, it may be incentivizing them, you know, so, um, you know, it, it may be sort of. Uh, money can't buy type of um, experiences to make them really want to take part in this. Um, um, but it also might just be a platform for, 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 for them to really, you know, to, to listen um, and give us their voice. So from, from our experience, um, these are the things that make a really successful open innovation. And what you also have to think about is we may not solve this. And, and as long as you go into it with that perspective, um, we may not come up with the best solution, but if we've made um, thousands of kids aware of the problem, then we're starting to solve it. Yeah, yeah I love that. Uh, Alfonso, what about you? you yes, it? well, I, I think that it's, it's important to make it easy, as Jamie said, uh, but it's also important to give visibility to as much as possible to those that has contributed and give their ideas, no? Mm. So, and of course, it, we should not give them a gift or we have give them at least the, this visibility so they will feel important in, the, in this process, no? So I think that he, this will be more value than giving them a jersey or whatever, uh, whatever we can give to them, no? So this visibility, let them important and, and of course, listen and understand what they say, no? That is, is, is going to be important, not to understand what they want to say and what they want to transmit, no? Yeah, yeah completely. And, and Susan, kind of any final thoughts from you? Yeah, I think two things. One is we need um, to publicize it so that we have as many kids as possible, anybody 16 and under participating. And then the second is, um, a friend of mine is from Sweden, and this is what she said. She said, in Sweden, when we um, are raised as children, the environment is, we are guardians of the environment. It is is our nature to want to protect it and take care of it. And I think just taking that feeling of right now it is under threat from various ways, and what can we do? at any age and what are those ideas, you know, so that we can be kind of these guardians or avengers to take, you know, to protect the planet. Yeah, amazing. So how can people get involved? Tell us more of the sort of real tactical things 
Um, please do pop anything in the chat all weekend as well. Um, Ali, I know you can, and we'll definitely follow up with everyone. But how can people get involved? Tell us more. Yeah, we'll be launching the kidskickoutplastic.com um, um, website. <clears throat> and on that, we'll have all of the details. Mm -hmm. um, I will share that with you all and some sort of next steps um, afterwards. And then it'll be great to... Uh, to have you know anyone that's attended to to start sharing um, sharing that with as many people as possible. Maybe. So we're going to be working um, with, you know to 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 find um, as many supporters and partners as um, as possible to 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 really amplify this out and and the outcome of it's going to be these incredible ideas that will be presented to football clubs um, uh, across mm -hmm. the um, uh, across Europe. So not only will the you know, to to Alfonso's point, you know the prizes, but you know these um, these sort of young um, uh, people with with ideas will then you know have exposure to uh, to all of the favourite clubs. I mean, it's an, it feels like a no brainer. I can't believe it's not been done before, but I'm so excited to to be able to support this. So thank you so much for coming and sharing sharing with us all more about this amazing initiative. We absolutely would love to amplify that. So please do share more detail with us afterwards. And we can definitely share that with everyone that's attended and on all of our channels across London and Partners and beyond. Um, a few kind of closing remarks or kind of key takeaways for me from this session. I think one of my favorites from, from this, Jamie, was from your initial presentation and in that finding a solution isn't the only result of open innovation. And that there are other benefits, such as just being in, open and in a community being open and inclusive can really drive across your organization. So I, I love that as a, as a takeaway. And then just this idea of making innovation accessible, making it open, making it as easy as possible for people to truly and authentically engage, be transparent, inspire, and really include that next generation, those people that, you know, those kind of groups that have, as you say, kind of no constraints and can really bring real blue sky thinking to some of the biggest problems the world is facing today um, listen and really try and understand what they're saying so thank you so so much for joining us all um, I hope you have a wonderful rest of the afternoon we really look forward to seeing how this takes place we'll have to have you back uh, to hear about how it goes um, and to hear about all the new solutions that you're now rolling out across the stadium Alfonso so we'll have to bring you back maybe we could all come and do it from Mallorca, I mean, yes, you're, you're you're able all, to, all invited. When you're here. Uh, <laughs> not my uh, bedroom in Streatham, so it'll be very exciting <laughs> to get out of London. Um, but thank you all so so much, and thank you everyone for attending, for your questions uh, and engagement. And uh, yeah, have a wonderful afternoon. Um, if anyone would like to stay on and ask me any questions about the Open Innovation Fellowship community we're building, please do. Um, otherwise, thank you all so much. Go and enjoy the sunshine here in London if you're in London um, and or enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank Bye. Bye.